These are notes from Math 60, City College of San Francisco, Monday, March the 30th, 2020, 6.9, page 558. And if you notice that the writing is a little bit too small, or if I'm going too fast, remember that you can always rewind or fast forward as often as you wish. And hopefully you have the actual notes in front of you, full size. And this recording is really just to give you the audio version of my notes. So as I'm doing all the work here, if you say it's too small, hopefully you're looking directly on your piece of paper with the notes as we follow along. This section pretty much goes over something called the cross multiply rule, which says if you have an equation called a proportion, which basically has a fraction on the left side, an equal sign, and a fraction on the right side. Notice fraction equals fraction, fraction equals fraction, and so on. Then we can do something called the cross multiply rule. I've indicated that with a red X here, which means this times this is equal to this times this. You can go across. Likewise, over here, this times this is equal to this times this, and so on. And that's what I'm trying to indicate with the red X is the cross multiply root. So for problem 21, X over 5 equals 15 over 25. We apply the cross multiply root. X times 25, which is 25X, is equal to 5 times 15, which is 75. And that leaves us with a fairly easy equation. Divide both sides by 25, and you get X equal to 3. In this particular case, there's no variable in the denominator, so I don't have to worry about plugging back in. That will become an issue a little bit later. For problem 25, again, cross multiply, but I notice that there's a variable in the denominator. There's a Z in the bottom here and a Z in the bottom here. So I have to be careful that when I plug back in my result, I'm not ending up dividing by zero. And we'll see that as we go along. But cross multiply, you have a fraction equals a fraction. So 5 times 2Z plus 6 is equal to 3 times 5Z plus 3. Distribute over here, 10z plus 30. Distribute over here, 15z plus 9. Now I have an equation that has z's on both sides, so I want to get all the z's on the same side, preferably with a positive sign. I can do that if I subtract 10z on both sides, so that means I want the right-hand side to have the z's, therefore I want the numbers to be on the left side, so I'm also subtracting 9 on both sides. So these 9's cancel out, these 10z's cancel out, I get 21 equals 5z, divide both sides by 5, and z is equal to 21 over 5. Again, I'm using the convention that the variable that you're solving for is on the left side. Otherwise, it would say 21 over 5 equals z, and of course, that's the same thing. In this particular case, since there's a variable and a denominator, I have to check to make sure that I'm not dividing by 0. If I were to plug in 21 over 5 here or 21 over 5 here, you're not going to get a 0 in the denominator, so we're okay. Problem 29, similar, I notice here I have to make sure I don't get a zero. So if I get a zero as a solution, I have to throw it out because I'm not allowed to divide by zero. Then I do the cross multiplier rule. That times that, 3x times 6x, which comes out to be 18x squared, is equal to that times that, 2 times 36 is equal to 72. Divide both sides by 18, x squared equals 4. I get a quadratic equation. I'm going to set the right-hand side equal to 0, so I subtract 4 on both sides. x squared minus 4 equals 0. The left side here factors into the difference of two squares. x squared minus 4 factors into x plus 2, x minus 2. Then we have the zero factor property. Either this expression is equal to 0, or this expression is equal to 0. You can pretty much just look at it and ask yourself, what number could I plug in for x? to give me a 0, that would be a negative 2. What number could I plug in right here for x that will give me 0 and that would be a positive 2? So my two solutions are negative 2 and 2 and once again I'm okay if I were to plug in either a 2 or a negative 2 I'm not dividing by 0 so we're good there. Up here problem 33 1 over x plus 3 equals negative 2x over x plus 5 once again I have to make sure that in my solutions what to get way down here when I plug back in, I'm not dividing by 0. Looks like if for both negative 5 over 2 and negative 1, if I were to plug in back here, I don't get 0, so I'm going to be okay. You don't know that ahead of time, of course. So we cross-multiply. 
that times that is equal to that times that. So negative 2x times x plus 3 equals 1 times x plus 5, but 1 times x plus 5 is just x plus 5. Distribute negative 2x squared minus 6x equals x plus 5. This is a quadratic equation. Quadratic means there's an x squared that shows up. So I want everything on one side equal to 0. So I want the right-hand side to be 0. So I subtract x on both sides and subtract 5 on both sides. If you can temporarily ignore the green, I have negative 2x squared minus 7x minus 5 equals 0. And that is a legitimate equation, except I don't like all the negatives. And remember, there's a trick that if I have all negatives here, I could now, in green, multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. And now everything's positive on this side, and 0 times negative 1, of course, is 0. So I get the much nicer equation, positive 2x squared plus 7x plus 5 equals 0. Factor this, 2x plus 5, x plus 1. Fortunately, there aren't that many things to try if you just go trial and error. 2x squared, you know, has to be 2x and x. 5 has to be either 1 times 5 or 5 times 1 by trial and error. This one is a 5 and this one is a 7. If you multi uh, This one's a 1. If you multiply this all back out, you should get 2x squared plus 7x plus 5. So once again, by the zero factor property, either 2x plus 5 is equal to 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. This one subtract 5 on both sides, 2x equals negative 5. Divide by 2 on both sides, x equals negative 5 halves. And over here, quite simply, subtract 1 on both sides, x equals negative 1. So my two solutions are negative 5 over 2, or x equals negative 1. And once again, if I were to substitute either of these back here and here, I'm not going to get 0, so we're okay. 53, we cross multiply. This time I decided not to draw the red x, but we just go ahead with it. That times that equals that times that. In this particular case, there's no variable in the denominator, so I don't have to worry about dividing by 0. So 3 times b plus 4 equals 5 times 3b minus 6. Distribute 3b plus 12 equals 15b minus 30. There are b's on both sides of the equal sign, so I would like to get them on the same side, preferably with a positive sign. I can accomplish that if I subtract 3b on both sides, which means I want the b's on the right side, which means I want the numbers on the left side. So simultaneously, when I subtract 3b on both sides, I will add 30 to both sides, so that way all the numbers are on the left side, and the right side would just have my b's. These cancel out. These cancel out. I get 42 equals 12b. Divide both sides by 12. B is 42 over 12, which reduces to 7 halves. And in this particular case, again, no worry about plugging back in. I'm not going to divide by 0, so we're okay. Problem 57 is a little bit different. 9z plus 6 divided by z squared plus 3z equals 7 over z plus 3. Yes, we could do the cross multiply root. That would still work. I'm noticing it would be quite cumbersome. I get some funny z squared here and another z squared here. It's possible, but in this particular case, we do something that we did the last time. I notice that if I factor this expression here, I get z times z plus 3, and I notice there's a z plus 3 over here. So the approach I'm going to take is ignore the red temporarily. 9z plus 6 over z times z plus 3 equals 7 over z plus 3. And it'd be a lot easier in this instance to just multiply both sides by the common denominator of z times z plus 3. So in red, I multiply z times z plus 3, z times z plus 3 on both sides. So on the left-hand side, this completely cancels this, so I just have 9z plus 6. On the right side, the z plus 3 cancels out, so I just have 7z. Subtract 7z on both sides and subtract 6 on both sides. So it looks like we're aiming for the z's to be on the left side and the numbers on the right side. So right here, the 7z's cancel out, the 6 cancels out. 2z is equal to negative 6. Divide both sides by 2. z equals negative 3. But I noticed in this particular case, if I plug in negative 3, either here or here, this one's probably easier to compute. If I plug in negative 3 right there, I get negative 3 plus 3, which is 0. I'd be dividing by 0, and that's a mathematical no-no. We're never allowed to do that. 
So negative 3 is not a solution after all, so we end up with no solution, which you can write like so. Or you can just simply write no solution, but it's a lot faster to just put 0 with a slash, which means the empty set. Up here for problem 61, x over x plus 2 equals 6 over x plus 2. Once again, you are allowed to cross multiply. It would work, but in this particular case, I notice, hey, if I just simply multiply both sides by x plus 2, that's gone, that's gone, and you get the answer right away, x equals 6. And a quick check of x equals 6, if I plug in 6 either here or here, I'm not dividing by 0, so that is a legitimate solution. Then for 65, we've got some decimals, and I notice there's no variable in the denominator here, so I don't really have to worry about dividing by 0, because I don't have an x down here. So I just simply cross-multiply, that times that equals that times that. So 12 times 2.5x plus 1 equals 4.5 times 2. Distribute, 30x plus 12 equals 9. Subtract 12, 30x equals negative 3. Divide both sides by 30, x is negative 3 over 30, which is negative 0 0.1. I leave the answer as a decimal because the problem started off with decimals. So recall the rule that we said that if a problem starts off with decimals, you can give the answer back as a decimal. If the problem starts with fractions, give the answer back as a fraction. So these are notes for section 6.9, the last section of chapter 6. And the test for chapter 6 would be this coming Friday, which would be April the 3rd. And you should separately be getting a sample exam, sample test for what that's going to look like.